need to put a timer on this one and then we're gonna get cracking because we have a lot to talk about today. My camera always dies after like 10 minutes, I don't know why. So yeah, 10 minute timer right there. I hope I'm in frame. Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today I'll be doing my February wrap up. In February I read a total of 12 books. I don't even have enough fingers for that, like it's 12 books, which is crazy, especially if you remember that February is the shortest month of the year. Let's look at some stats before I start talking about the books. So in February I read 12 books, 3 of them were physical books, 5 of them were ebooks and 4 of them were audiobooks. If we look at audience, 10 of the books were aimed to adults and 2 of the books were YA for young adult. If we look at genre, this is like quite weird and interesting. Like I can explain this, but I read zero fantasies in February. For someone whose favorite genre is fantasy, that is very weird. I read three contemporaries, seven romances, which I will explain why, and two historical books. And for rating, like this month wasn't bad, I am very happy and pleased with my reading, but like rating wise it wasn't the best month because I had quite a few books that were on the lower half of the rating system I guess. Three of the books were two stars, five of the books were three stars, three of the books were four stars and only one book was a five star read. So to explain this I read a bunch of romance books in February. Some of them I meant to read, some of them I had not really planned to read but ended up reading anyway. The reason is that for the first week of February I did my romance reading vlog. I read five books in, in a week. That's where all the stats come from basically. <laughs> Let's go through each book in chronological order. So the first book I read was Beautiful Bastard by Christina Lauren as a part of my romance reading vlog. This book is basically about a... it's a Twilight fanfic. Let's be honest, it's a Twilight fanfic or it started out as a Twilight fanfic. It's sort of like a Fifty Shades but Oh, even earlier the Fifty Shades. It's pre Fifty Shades. So it's about like what were the names? Bella and Edward? Not really though, but it's about this girl. I believe her name is Chloe. I don't remember. It's about this girl. She's the assistant of this boss at a huge company and they hate each other or they dislike each other. They get easily annoyed by one another. But then of course for some reason they just go at it once because even though they don't like each other, they're still very attracted to one another, you know. They just start like having this sort of like affair or like friends with benefits but without the friends part. And that's the book. So I gave this two star. It's not really that special. It's very predictable. I mean it's a simple and easy and somewhat fun read I guess. There are better romances to read I would say and there are better books by Christina Lauren to read because I do like Christina Lauren. Also I just want to mention that especially the books I would talk about that I read during my romance reading vlog, if you want more rants and just like deeper descriptions about those books, check out that vlog. The second book that I read for my romance reading vlog was The Kiss Quotient by Helen Huang. This one I really really like. In this book we're following Stella. She has Asperger's and she's very dedicated to her work, which has made it so that I guess she feels like she's a bit behind and or lacking in like the dating and sexual part of like romance and stuff. So what she decides to do is to hire an escort. This escort is named Michael and she decides to hire Michael to help her get to know the ropes of dating, kissing, sex things. It's really fun. It's, it's a great book. It's tropey. It has great characters. I loved both Stella and Michael. Both are great. It has amazing family backgrounds and family dynamics. It has this ability rat. I got into it and I loved Michael so much. Michael was, this was really good. And also the steamy parts. They were really good and steamy. Don't be fooled by this cute and like cartoonish cover. It's a steamy book, but like good steam. Michael was working for it. God damn, I want a Michael. Really good book, I gave it four stars. Not really much to complain about, honestly. And I'm looking forward to read more books by Helen Huang in the future. The third book that I read for my romance reading vlog was Dares for the Night by Katie Robert. And this is a steamy one. This is quite a short, smutty novel that I read as an ebook. It's about a girl. It's her birthday, so she goes out to the club and she meets these two guys. They are a bit weird, a bit mysterious, but very hot. And they basically invite her to come with them to their place. So this is a polyamorous romance thing, smut. So it's a male-male-female thing going on 
and it is very hot and it is very smutty and like it's quite good. I did enjoy this for what it is. It was so great and I was also surprised because the characters are quite well developed and there is actually a plot and like a mystery which is quite fun. So I gave this four stars. Like, it did what it needed to do, I was happy with it. Yeah, I might read more by Kate Robert in the future because this was quite a lot of fun. The fourth book I read for my romance reading blog was A Princess in Theory. I had to think there for a while and when I remembered I instantly felt disappointed because I didn't like this book. A Princess in Theory by Alyssa Cole. I had probably too high expectations on this one. It just disappointed me. The story is about a girl who starts getting emails from someone claiming that she's the lost princess or something and that she's betrothed to this African prince. So this girl being smart she thinks that ah this is a scam, the leap. But then this African prince shows up. He wants to get to know this girl without her knowing his title. So he's doing this fake identity thing in order to get to know her. So she thinks she's just getting to know this regular guy until his true identity is revealed. It's a fun concept. What didn't work for me with this book was the writing. I was into this book for like the first five or six chapters but then the writing just kept messing me up. It was so inconsistent and like offbeat and just weird. It, it didn't work. Like I was so confused by the writing on multiple occasions. Like the big revelations in the book they were not well made. I didn't vibe with it. Fortunately, there wasn't even enough of smutty parts in the end of the book to make up for the mess. I gave it two stars. I can understand why people like it. The execution just wasn't well. And then the fifth and final book that I read for my romance reading vlog was The Duke's Shotgun Wedding by Stacey Weed. It's also another short novella, around like 100 pages or something like that. It's a historical setting at least. So the story is basically about a lady, a girl, who storms the mansion of this duke and says that the duke has to marry her because his brother cheated on her or something like that. He's like, well, yeah, okay, let's get married. <laughs> it's about these two characters and they get married and things will happen. It was an alright book. I liked the historical setting of it, but like the characters weren't really that special. They were quite flat. There wasn't that much intrigue in it, I would say. The author is kind of trying to make it seem like there's some sort of mystery or that the guy has a dark and mysterious past. That's not really the case though. I gave it three stars. It wasn't bad, but it wasn't like amazing or anything special in that way. And those were the five books I read for my romance reading vlog. But let's continue with what I read next. Because next up I picked up The Mermaid from Jeju by Sumi Han. And this book was randomly picked from my Goodreads Want to Read list. I listened to this one as an audiobook. It's a very beautiful book. It's very descriptive, very detailed, very lyrical. It's about this girl and her family, 40s, 50s perhaps, in Korea. And they live at Jeju, which is this island on the outskirts of South Korea. And it's basically like South Korea's Hawaii, is kind of what they compare it to. It's this gorgeous island, I've been there, it's amazing. So it's about Jeju and what happened to Jeju and this girl and her story and how her life ended up after the events in like the 40s, 50s. I believe that's the decades. As I said, very beautiful book. I struggle a bit with keeping up with it. Maybe that's on me more than the writing, but I got a bit confused at some parts of the book. It is a very beautiful tribute to Jeju and to the Henyo of Jeju. And the Henyo are the women that are like free divers who dive for everything from like kelp and fish and pearls and oysters. And it's an entire tradition. It's a cultural thing. It's like a cultural heritage. That was very beautiful to read about as well. I gave it three stars. It's a very beautiful book. After The Mermaid from Jeju, I read Detour to Love by Amanda Radley. And this book was randomly picked from my arcs on Matt Galley. It was like a sweet, cute, romancy, simple book. So it's about these two women. They are going on a long haul flight to Japan. One is going there to accept an award that she doesn't want for reasons you will come to learn in the book. And the other one is going there to meet a woman she fell in love with online. This flight doesn't go that well. There are multiple things that happen that will kind of like delay their arrival in Tokyo. And then a lot of things happens in Tokyo that will be processed later on in the book as well. So it's a sapphic romance and it's really cute. I found this one to be quite predictable to be honest and I couldn't relate to the women at least at the beginning of the book. The book also kind of felt like it was two different parts. Like there's the one part 
where they are going to Tokyo and everything is super predictable and you know what's gonna happen. And then there's a second half of the book, like the events after Tokyo, that are quite interesting. I think I enjoyed it, but it also wasn't anything spectacular. I gave it three stars. Following that book, I listened to The Glass Hotel by Emily St. John Mandel. It's, it's another interesting one. It's basically about a Ponzi scheme and the characters involved in this scheme. If you don't know, a Ponzi scheme is an investment scheme where the early investors get returns from the money from the later investors. So it's kind of this like escalating thing where it just gets bigger and bigger and you probably have seen or heard about it from like other books, movies, TV shows, whatever. So it's about that and the characters kind of surrounding this. The one thing I don't really get with this book is what's its message, what's its purpose? Because the only one I can get from this is Ponzi schemes are bad and like we knew that already. That's nothing new or revolutionary. The writing is really good. I did greatly enjoy the writing of this book so I definitely want to check out Emily St. John Mandel in the future and her other works. But the story itself, nothing really happened. It's just like Ponzi scheme gone bad and that's the story. And there's like a lot of things that just didn't vibe with me like I was trying to find some sort of purpose or message in some of the events. It all just felt a bit too strained. So this was another three star read. Once again, lovely writing really enjoyed it and I saw a lot of potential in the story but then it just like nothing happened. The next book I picked up was Daisy Jones and the Six by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I already mentioned this in my weekend reading vlog. I love this one. So good. In this book we are following a fictional band in the 70s and this book is very interesting because it's told like in a documentary style. The book is told through interviews with the band members and the people that were involved in their success. And I was so impressed with this book. First off, it's hilarious, like laugh out loud funny. Because since it is told through interviews, each person being interviewed, they have their own sort of memory of what happened and how they are remembering things. And sometimes these memories are quite contradicting, which is that's the funny part. Also, even though it's told in like this interview sort of format, I found it so descriptive. Like I could imagine myself being there like in their recording studio or when they were doing their photo shoots for the album and stuff. Like I was there. I was very present in this book. And I love that because this book doesn't have the sort of like long descriptions of how something looked like and such, but the way the characters told the story still made it feel very much alive and real. And as you can see, I tabbed it like crazy. The parts I found funny, the parts I found sweet, the parts I found like badass and cool and like the shocking parts. I had the best time reading this book. I was looking forward to picking it up at every evening and I was sad when it ended. There was one thing like in the end of the book that kind of bothered me a bit. Didn't really vibe with that, but they did save it with like the last line, the last sentence of the book. So I did give this five stars. It's not a perfect book by any means, but if you do enjoy either music or like the 70s or this sort of interview format documentary thing, definitely check it out. I highly recommend it and I want to read more by Taylor Jenkins Reid. I'm so happy I finally read it and it was beyond my expectations. Three books left! Yay! The next book I picked up was Love from A to C by S.K. Ali. I listened to this one as an audiobook and this was like my Qatar book because I wanted to read a book that somehow included Qatar. In this story we are following a Muslim girl who lives in America but because of some things happening in school she goes to Doha to visit a family member and stay there for a couple of weeks. And this girl she is very proud of her heritage and she's not afraid to speak up against racist and Islamophobic comments, which is kind of the thing that's getting her in trouble at school, because unfortunately she has a very racist teacher. We're also following a guy named Adam, and Adam is in university in London, but his family lives in Qatar, so he also goes to Qatar, and he was very recently diagnosed with multiple sclerosis MS, which is like a disease to the nervous system. I said that in one sentence, that's crazy. These two characters accidentally meet up, start to become friends and learn about each other, get to know one another. It is a very beautiful book. It's a very important book, most of all. There's a lot of lessons to be learned about Islamophobia, racism, ignorance, prejudice, pre prejudice, pre 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 pre... Okay, I can't say that word. 
that work. There's a lot of things to learn from this book and it definitely opened up my eyes and made me more aware of some of the things that I'll probably encounter. That's what I liked the most with this book was the whole like focus on racism, Islamophobia and the issues and how Zainab, the female character, is trying to speak up against it. And also how we learn more about like Muslims and their religion and their beliefs and it kind of just like it brought it to a level which should make it understandable for everyone, I feel like. I gave this book four stars, it was a great read, a very important read, pick it up if you're able to. And now for the last two books that I read in February, let's start with Less by Andrew Sean Greer. Now this is sort of like, it's not cheating, definitely not, but I actually started this one in January. I read about half of it in January and then I didn't pick it up and I completed it now. In this story we're following a man who's about to turn 50 and he gets a wedding invitation to his ex's wedding. He doesn't want to go to this wedding but he's too awkward about it. So what he does is that since he's an author he sometimes gets very interesting mails inviting him to different events and he also has a lot of friends all over the world. So what he does is he accepts everything, like yes I'm gonna go to Italy, yes sure I'll meet you in Japan, of course I'm going to that event in Mexico, because he's too awkward to say no to the wedding invitation of his ex's wedding. So it's basically about this gay almost 50 year old man traveling the world and it sounds hilarious right? It sounds like such a fun book and especially since it's so short it must be quite fast paced right? There must be a lot of actions and things happening constantly no, <laughs> there's not. This is quite a boring book, unfortunately. I had too high expectations on this one. This author and I had completely different visions for how this sort of story plays out. The main character, Arthur Les, he doesn't have a personality. His one personality trait is that he knows interesting characters. So like, he's not the interesting characters, it's just that he used to date interesting characters. The things that happen while they're abroad is not fun. It's not interesting. It's just I think this book is trying to be quirky. I didn't get this and it was so boring, especially like one of the chapters. I have no idea what happened in that one because the writing was just so tedious that I just didn't care. This was unfortunately a disappointing book for me. I gave it two stars. And like it has won a prize. What were they on when they gave this book a prize? No, disappointed. Next, the final book of my February wrap up and I just finished listening to it today, is Love and Luck by Jenna Evans Welsh. And this is the second book in the Love and Gelato series. So it's a YA series about characters who for some reason move to another country or go to another country. I'm not quite sure what the premise is, but in Love and Gelato there's a girl who moves to Florence and in this book we're following a girl who goes to Ireland with her family for a wedding. In the story this girl is supposed to go to Italy to meet her best friend but instead she and her brother goes on this road trip all around Ireland following the footsteps of some famous band and also following the instructions from a guidebook about heartbreak. It's sort of like how to repair your heart by visiting every site in Ireland kind of thing. It's a very cute book, I did enjoy this one and I actually preferred it to Love and Gelato. In Love and Gelato I couldn't really relate to the character, I definitely liked this character more there's also a lot of sibling dynamics because this girl has three brothers and I really liked that aspect of the book. I really liked the focus on family and like siblings and being a brother and sister. So that was really cute. I did enjoy this one and I gave it three stars. That's kind of it for this February wrap up. A lot of books to talk about and I tried to condense it. So hopefully this won't be too long and I won't be too boring with the explanation and description of each book. I'm very pleased with my reading in February. I read a bunch of new authors, I read genres that I typically don't read that much from. Do I have some interesting stats? One series continuation, one own voices book, some POC rep, some LGBTQ plus rep, some disability rep, and I also went through some of my owned TBR, which is always nice because that's usually the issue, right? That you don't read the books that you actually have. I think I'm gonna stop rambling now. If you're interested in hearing more about the romance books that I read this month, please, please, please check out my romance reading vlog. 
I had so much fun working on that one. Reading wise, filming wise, editing wise, I had the best time working on that vlog. Other than that, what do I have to say? I don't think I have that much to say. Thank you so much for watching this February wrap up. I'm super excited about the books I'll be reading in March. Check out my March TBR if you haven't. I hope I will have more 4 and 5 stars in March. That's the goal. And to read more fantasy because I've been fantasy deprived now. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye! You gotta just go for it. Don't think about what comes after or what came before. This is content. I don't know how my hair is by the way. It was wash day. I think it, it, it is curly but it always gets weird up top. I'm not sure why. So if I look bald, that's why. <laughs> Perhaps I'm going bald. I don't know. <laughs> Honestly it could be a thing. Yes, okay. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one. Goodbye! <laughs> I should stop making that sound. I should have something now. Ah, I'm done, I'm done.